Now, it's hard to think of a better plant to add fragrance to the summer garden than lavender. Here we've got a lavandin with its lovely long flower spikes, and we've got French lavender as well. Both of those will really exude a wonderful fragrance, particularly in the bright summer's heat. Lavender is a Mediterranean plant, so it's really happy in full sun heat conditions, either growing in a pot or growing out in the open border. But it will cope with some shade, so as long as it gets sun for, say, around eight hours of the day during the summer, it'll be more than happy. It won't thrive in really heavy, damp clay, but sandy soil suits it, an alkaline or acid, it makes no difference, just as long as it's free-drained, open and aerated. Now, when it comes to planting, it's a good idea to take out a nice deep planting hole and mix in plenty of gritty compost into the planting hole when you're out in the open ground. But if you're going to plant into a container, uh, then it's a really good idea to make up a mixture like this, which is equal parts by volume of a horticultural grit, of a peat-free compost, and also a John Innes compost. So I'm going to use this to fill the bottom of the pot to start with. So I'm coming up about a third of the depth of the pot to start with. Just settle that round and perhaps lightly firm it in place and then offer the plant in its pot into the container to make sure that you're getting the level right because you want it to be at the same level at the top of the pot as the edge of the pot that you're potting into. This has been watered the day before so that it should knock out of its container nice and easily. And you can see it's got a really well developed root system. You've got a nice amount of room to fill in with compost around here. Don't choose too large a pot uh, because if you pot it up into a big pot too quickly what you'll find is the roots will run to the edge of the pot, circle around it and not make full use of the compost in between. So about two fingers wide is the maximum that I would take it. In a few years time we could pot this up into a larger pot if needs be. So just fill in around the edge of the pot uh, and then firm it as you go just to make sure that you're consolidating that pot and there we are that's ready to grow away happily. Give it a good watering, make sure that it's thoroughly soaked right down to the bottom and that plant will be happy in there for a few years. So other than deadheading, you then need to think ahead to the winter, giving this plant a bit of protection if it's growing in a pot like this. You could protect the sides with bubble polythene or put a layer of fleece over during very, very cold weather. And that winter protection is most important for things like French lavender, which needs those few degrees extra protection. So fleecing on that, whether it's growing in a pot or in the open border, that will just help it through the winter. If you've got a pre-existing lavender plant, then you can take cuttings in the summer to propagate new plants to plant around in the garden. But if you buy a new plant from the garden centre, my advice would be to go for a nice bushy one like this, uh, and then it's got lots of additional cutting material on it. So simply snip those new growths off, low down on the plant, just above a bud so that it will regrow from that point. And we can probably get quite a few cuttings off this plant if we snip round. You don't need to take them all off, you can leave some on to grow. So we want to make our cuttings around three to four centimetres long. Look at the tip first, those soft tips will just wilt very very quickly if you leave them in position so it's worth just pinching out that soft tip then put it onto a tile, something nice and firm that you can cut onto, cutting just below where there's a leaf attached at the bottom and then you can just gently pull those leaves off the bottom half of the cutting and any side shoots that are growing there as well and then that's ready to insert into a half seed tray uh, filled with compost this is about a 50 50 mix of peat free compost and uh, horticultural grit to make a really nice free drained mixture then simply insert that cutting into that compost, pushing it down to the base of the leaves. And then you can repeat that with other cuttings in a line through here, perhaps get three lines of cuttings through there. You can push them into the compost away from the edge because this is such a free draining cuttings mix. Water it with a watering can with a fine rose attached, let it drain, 
put the whole tray on a well-lit kitchen windowsill somewhere where you can keep an eye on it. Keep them watered, perhaps watering once a week to keep that compost moist. Those will have rooted in about eight to 12 weeks time. Pot the individual cuttings up into pots, grow them on and you've got lavender galore. A great way to grow lavender is to grow it from seed. Um, the individual plants can be quite expensive, so a packet of seed will cost you about two or three quid, and there are about 100 seeds in there. So it's a really economical way to make a lot of plants for a little money. Um, I'm gonna sow those seeds into a terracotta seed pan because that's really good for lavender to germinate in. So I've made up this compost from an equal parts mix of coarse horticultural grit, um, peat-free compost, which is my organic matter, uh, and then a loam-based compost. That I'm gonna to use to fill my terracotta seed tray here, seed pan. And I'm just loosely putting that compost into that seed pan and slightly overfilling it. I'm gonna use a straight-edged piece of wood. I'm gonna come through the middle of the compost and then with a sawing action, saw first from one side to the edge and then from the middle to the other edge. And then hold the pot firmly and three taps, a bit noisy. You can see it's dropped down below the rim of the pot and that makes watering easier. Uh, and we're gonna put some grit on there a bit later so it allows a bit of room for that. So then open your seed packet, tap the seeds so that they drop to the bottom. Just sprinkle a few of the seeds into your hand so I'm probably going to sow about 20 to 30 of those seeds, little pinch, and then between my thumb and forefinger, rolling my thumb against my forefinger, just distribute those over the surface of the compost. You won't be able to see these, they're so tiny, but they're just going on nice and evenly right across the surface. So when they're sowed on the surface of the compost, you then get this grit over here. Uh, which I say is coarse grit, and then we're just going to put a very, very fine layer of that coarse grit over the surface of the compost, just to hold those seeds in place. Level it out. It's really good to do very fine seeds in this fashion. And then I'm going to bring in a water tray to soak those seeds and let it soak up for about half an hour, 40 minutes or so, and that will soak moisture up through into the compost just giving those seeds enough moisture to start the germination process. Now these need to be put in a sheltered position. They can go out in the garden, they could go in a cold greenhouse. They don't need excessive temperatures. It's probably gonna take six to eight weeks to start to germinate. Uh, and then you'll have tiny little baby plants that you can take individually out, put them into individual pots, grow them on for about another six to 12 months before you can plant them out in the garden. The key to success with lavenders really is to make sure that you deadhead them as soon as they finish flowering, cutting back to just below where the flower stems finish. You can just see the little buds starting to grow that will re-clothe this bush in foliage to help it get through the winter. One of the biggest problems that you find with lavender is that it can get woody relatively quickly and unless you deadhead and prune back the plants regularly you'll end up with a plant that can look a bit leggy and twangly um, and actually that can cause the plant to die back so if you look into the center of this bush you can see that it's already trying to regenerate grow back from low down so it's a good idea if you've got a leggy plant to cut back down quite severely it looks a bit drastic but cut back down so that you're taking out that woody material. You can be quite brutal with it. Cut back all that woody material so that you can let this younger stuff grow through from the centre here. Now, as far as pests and disease go, the good thing about lavender is that it has so many volatile oils in it that it seems to put most pests off, with the exception, unfortunately, of something called frog hopper or cuckoo spit. It's the thing that produces that 
horrible spitty like foam on the plants. Inside that foam is a little insect that's sucking the sap out of the plant. Uh, and the only other thing really that you'll get something called rosemary beetle that sometimes finds its way in uh, and starts chewing the leaves, but it's not really a major pest. So all in all, pretty trouble free. Now when it comes to varieties, there's a whole raft out there to choose from, not just lavender coloured forms, but also white and pink flowered ones as well. One of my particular favourites though is the French lavender form, which is Lavendula stoicas fat head. And that has really great big chunky heads that ooze lots of that lovely lavender scent. And then there are the English lavenders. Those are types of Lavendula angustifolia. They can come in a range of sizes from quite big, tall ones uh, down to the more compact varieties, things like Lavendula hidcut. And then there are hybrids between the tall lavenders and lavendins. And they're things like this, which is an intermediate hybrid. Uh, this one's called Phenomenal, and I think it is pretty phenomenal. The scent is glorious. So it's always worth making some room for a lavender in your garden. You'll be sitting there surrounded by its beautiful scent and listening to the gentle buzz of the bees.